Good day, everybody. Welcome to the Razor Sharp Review of 2018. I have my little Christmas trees up here because we are having a ball with the stream Steam sales. If you might not have noticed already, it is the Steam sale weekend, and I don't know if that sound is a little bit irritating to you, but uh, hee <laughs> jingle bells. Um, also, my credit card is taking a pretty hard dent, like most of you guys uh, must have during these weeks or at least for in my case first a uh, couple of days during the uh the steam sales but i've actually got some nice uh titles to show you and one of them will be supreme commander uh which is on sale as you can see on my display uh, i've bought the um it is an older game true but it is 75 percent off for the game and the dlc and that is a that that is a pretty sweet deal you're getting because it's uh, apart from uh, part two that is I don't know if that's on sale as well but I would not recommend buying that one. This game I actually know, and it is absolutely fantastic. So okay, that's that will start. Isn't sorry for the glitch, guys. In any case, let's go on to Supreme Commander. I'm going to. Put Forge the Lions in because that's the uh, expansion pack, and usually the expansion is a little bit better than the original. So here we go. I hope you guys like the uh, little Christmas trees for the little for the festivities for this year. <laughs> Ah, oh, Christmas was coming in here. We were watching. Whoa! What's that? Oh. Reality has warped into a different dimension. And then our enemies are coming. The graphics are old of this game, but I know the gameplay very well from Supreme Commander. For the people who have been playing um, old style real time strategies like Total Annihilation, this was done by the, the same designers as Total Annihilation, as, um, <clears throat> who have made Total Annihilation. No. But the problem with this game is, and opposite to the, uh, to the previous ones, is that this game does not allow fighters or dog fighters to be... Oh, hold on, my camera is getting screwed up. The dog fighters to shoot on land, so it gets a different tactical perspective on that. Sorry for this, guys. Camera is having a having a man, having a meltdown. Okay, Capella. Two years later, this is apparently after the end of um, the original series of Supreme Commander. You can buy both the expansion pack and the original game on Steam now for a 75% off. So it'll just cost you about four or five bucks for the original game and the expansion at this moment until January. Get that ship out of here. Engines coming online. Just need a couple more minutes. Okay, I won't bother you with the story because that's something um, I believe you have to uh, create yourself. So let's enter our name here. My name is Razor Sharp, as usual. Okay, so let's start with this. If there are any suggestions, I can see you on chat. So if you want to make suggestions uh, for the review, um, just name one in the chat below, and I will respond accordingly. Um, I don't want the um, the overview, overlay of the reviews I do to be too uh, to have too much of the, um, of the chat in it because they keep I keep them during the entire review. Also, what should we do? Let's see if we can um, go online with this because it's an older game. If we if we can do matchmaking in Forged Alliance. Okay, so that's the down. Um, that's actually not a good thing for this game uh, to buy because there are no people online at the moment. It is an older game, it's not like Command and Conquer 3 where you can rush in and still find people playing it. There are actually no people playing this game at this moment, though that might change a little bit when the Steam sales are, uh, are done. And people with, well, let's say potato PCs <laughs> still want to, to have a go at, the, at it. I don't know how the hell this happened. No, back, back. Okay, options. 
So let's see what video settings we can have. No, we definitely do not want those low low frame rates. Disable secondary adapter. <laughs> Hi. On, on, high, high. Let's put everything on high. I think we can manage that. NCA rising at least four. High, high, and everything on apply. We should be good with that. Let's see what this game looks like a couple of years after its release. Campaign. Let's go for the campaign. I will keep this review short. I have always no, I do not want a tutorial. Tutorial, no. Introduction video, nope. Oh, we can select the um I don't know how the hell this happened, but those bastards found us. They've made planet fall and are attacking Fort Clark and the outlying civilian centers. Now let's just go into the game. Let's see what we're up against. So what I know from the old games is that um you really want to immediately start producing your power and your uh metal production. Yeah, that 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 is really something that made this game uh, stand out from other other RTS games. In the area. Is that Blow your build and your um, up with and your resources are actually part of, a line of an ongoing um, acceleration and they are decreasing. Of so but if you, you can only them, build as fast as you're getting metal and power easy. coming in. Once you deal with the primary base Okay, let's see what our day. objective is. Ah, hell. Enemy gunships are inbound. It's time to get you down there while we still can. Oh, the shit. They're attacking the gate. Get on planet while you still can. Get on the planet. Select your faction. If anyone has a suggestion, do we have Aeon? I like Cybran. Okay, so we have a lot of disposable metal here. That's good. That was a little too close for comfort. Get it done. Okay, commander. let's see what we can do. We have a power generator. Also, this is what you can do in those games, and I really I like you guys would be busy changing like that. water in Brackman's brain tank. Ignore him, Commander. Concentrate on the battle ahead. Dostja out. Okay, so what do we have here? We have no construction for units. We have to remedy that. Okay. I will just go. The damage shield generator will help protect you from we have fire. Repair in the above, you can see how much power we have coming in right there. Uh, and there you can see how much metal we have coming in. So I am building. But after we've done that, we should build a land factory. We can build it right over there. Uploading the brick schematic to your ACU. The brick is a siege assault bot that has been modified so it can cross water. Another Brackman special. HQ out. I don't know. We can. We cannot build anything yet. We only have our commander who can do that. But as you can see, we are having a minus and a plus. But this will be one of the games that I will keep. Also, you have this insane... You see that you have this all-terrain. You can see all your units. You can group them. You can uh, put anything in. You have this uh, big overview of the map. Which was kind of unique for its time. Because this was around the same time that Command & Conquer was still popular. And constructing things and everything is... Uh, you can... You can you can accelerate this when you have some construction bots. There's also a good technique if you have, if you build your uh, your intake of metal and power really fast. You can you can also build um, build your army pretty uh, pretty fast. And you have a limited amount of buildings you can make and units. Well, the units are limited, I guess, to about 200 or maybe uh, 300, 400 units. But that's really quite a lot in these kind of games. So from from a graphic standpoint, not much has changed already. We see um, some cool soldiers that are still there on the that are there. Yeah, now they look pretty decent. So 
That's something cool. Also, the terrain is still not... It, it's still a game you could play. Uh, mobile light artillery, anti-air gun. So, what we can do is... I actually want more of those engineering bots. I can have this one help. So, what happens now when the commander starts helping a building? You will see... He uses his uh, building gun in addition to the or to the um, to the factory, so it can build much much more. And that's a really a good thing. It gives us a little bit more room to uh, to build fast. Also, that's why you want to have all those engineers in. And I think we have our first engineering bot here. Now what we can make him do is build another land factory. Or... Oh, he cannot build a better one. Uh, not cool, man. Okay, let's build some more land factories. Also, air factory, naval factory. Those are practically the same. Like one. Oh, no, that's the one I already have. Have him build a naval factory right after that. And another one, and another one. We definitely want to invest more in naval and air support because we are on land. So when the next one comes along, we'll have him build an air factory right over there. And have him help him. And help him. That one? Okay. We could use some more anti-air guns. Let him build there. You can also set waypoints. Like I want him to drop everything over there. Also, let's go for some hydrogen power. We have something we can place it on. But oh, we don't have any hard. Yeah, that's, that, um, that one doesn't work. So, what can we build? Power generator, mass storage. There isn't much else we can do here. We do not have that much metal intake. In this level, so we can build power generators, energy storage. At least have them build some mass storage right along along this line, and have him build power storage, energy storage right alongside this line. Just have them build like crazy. I want them. Building other stuff. So as you can see, it's pretty tactical. You can um, the units are pretty much uh, doing it themselves when you hold down shift. You can plan an entire base up ahead and just have them do their thing the whole uh, the whole scenery long. Like if I can, um, if this one is ready, what I can also do is gather. As you can see, when I hold down shift, I can have them gather all the other buildings. Also if you had a big battlefield this one will just pick up uh, the pieces around in that, area, in that area. Have him build a little bit more of those. Tech 2. And I can upgrade those to new tech levels. Okay, it has this one, and then tech three. Yep. I want them to upgrade as well, and upgrade. Actually, no, I don't want this upgrade. We have an ambi amphibious tank. We can go over the the. Um, ooh, I actually never seen this before. But let's go for a couple of those amphibious ones. Have him help him out. Because you're done here. Okay, and we have one here. So we can go for a attack submarine or frigate. Let's go for a shitload of frigates. So now you can see our intake and power. 
and metal is still stable so we can keep on building steadily as we are going here so let's just select those if you press control you can select everything in sight and let's have them go over here and we want to go for interceptors okay have them build interceptors attack bombers and this one Okay, let's just cancel this and let uh, have him upgrade. And the Harrier's gunship air transport, which is good, but I want the real deal. As you might notice, these uh, these anti-air <laughs> crafts are getting. Uh... Okay, let's put those over here. Have those over there. You see, this is a good thing about the uh, about the overlay and I have it right here. But it takes time to build a uh, a decent base, as you can see. We're still not over our power, so destroyer, cruiser, yeah. These were aircraft carrier. That's great, strategic submarine and battleship. Okay, let's go for a couple of those battleships. Let's have a couple of more engineers down here. I thought he was going to be helping with this one. This one still isn't upgraded. Go and upgrade, Japanese. Yes. So I don't want it to start building those. I want five of those. And then I want to just spam those tanks, amphibious tanks. Oh, I see enemy units coming in. Shit, I don't have anything to counter them with. Fuck. Is this a bomber? No, this is an interceptor. Shit, it can't fire on them. Hope this one holds out. Where are my bombers? Oh, I have some units right here. Have them attack there. Cool. Okay. Let's see what this one does. How much damage does this one do? Oh no, they're not here yet. As you can see, <laughs> our interceptors are already going to work. And here I have more bigger, better power generators. And mass extractors, better ones. Let's see what we have. Shield generators, artillery installation. Oh yeah, this all artillery installations are pretty, <laughs> pretty savage because you can bomb everything with it. In the original game, you had these big birdas. I mean, those were insane. So let's just build an anti-flank gun here. Then another one here, 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 and we're going for land, point defense, about here, 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 here. Here. So that one's got his work cut out for him. Is he now? I put up. 
This is a little bit of a challenge though sometimes. Now I have one of those things building somewhere. In any case, let's build a power generator right there. Uh, him build. Radar system? Right there. I have those. I'll let them go there. As you can see, there's a yeah. Uh, this is really tactical. I love this kind of uh, these kind of games. You're just pushing block, and trying to get there as fast as you can. Oh yeah. This is a risk. <laughs> That's risky. Help him. Help him out. How many of those amphibious tanks do we have? Okay, are you upgraded yet? Armored assault bot, mobile heavy artillery. Let's see what this one does. Okay, those are my amphibious tanks. Let's see how they uh, measure up when they go into the field there. Let's see how they would do. Oh, they also have anti uh, anti air capabilities. Oh no, they don't. And they won't stand a chance against them. So this is basically what this um, the Forge Alliance is. And if you're, I think if you're familiar with the layout of Supreme Commander, you would have some fun with it. Um, especially when you play with a friend, which I would definitely guarantee doing. You can have these huge maps um, in which you you can build pretty much anything. You can build nuclear bombs. You can, um, you you can basically bomb the shit out of your opponent. Okay, then let's just have them go to, to the base and discover something, see what they have in store for us there. Probably won't get very far. At least I'm not expecting to. Ah, well. <laughs> that was their moment to shine. As you can see, there are there is stuff coming our way. I want to go away with that. Point defense. We still don't have point defense. <coughs> Some of those artillery positions okay. are still operating. As you can see, this is one of those games. That takes a lot of time. <coughs> I'm going to get rid of those ah, things on my head because they get can get really irritating. So, what does this game cost? What would I rate this game? Uh, are you sure you want to save? I don't want to save. I want to exit the game. So that was Supreme Commander. It is now on sale for 70% off, and you can get the entire deal for, let's see, 
These games are pretty decent. You can get the entire package for three euros and seventy-five cents. You will get the original Supreme Commander game and Supreme Commander Forge Alliance expansion pack, which you've just seen. The original game is, as I know, pretty decent. It's solid. It has a really great strategy value. Let me just put this thing away because my cat also likes it. Um, it has really good strategy value. Uh, there are endless ways to to win a battle. You can go by sea, you can go by air, you can... There are so many possibilities to defend yourself, to launch an attack, or you can just go turtle shell yourself and nuke the shit out of him with a lot of nukes. Um, that's every, everything is possible within this strategy genre. The only thing that bothers me is I actually played the original Total uh, Annihilation, and when I've done that, but when you've done, played Total Annihilation, this game does take it a little step downwards because um, the fighters could, in the past, uh, fire on land, and in this game it doesn't. So one of my favorite tactics to do, <laughs> called the Eagle, um, is no longer possible. We, we would just swarm them with low um, low level uh, fighters in the air, so nothing in the air could touch us, and we did gradual damage overall to the to the surface area. But that one has been taken away. That was a an eagle. You go turtle shell your base and then eagle out with anything you've got, like hundreds and hundreds of uh, fighter planes. But that was Supreme Commander. What else do I have in store for you? I have a another game for you, which is Forest. Or actually, I wanted to rate the Supreme Commander Forge Alliance, and I would rate it for the music is pretty decent. The graphics are a little bit, um, they are a little bit old, but they're still well, they're still better than some new real-time strategies that come online and do have as a lot of features as gameplay. Uh, this one is definitely a winner um, above most real-time strategy games that I have played. Except when you want the turn-based kind of stuff, like uh, the Total War genre, then you're this is not in that in that niche. But for an overall real-time strategy, this one is definite and still one of the best games that has ever been released, in my opinion. Except for Total Annihilation, but that one has been seriously, seriously aged. So I would give this game about an 8 out of 10, and for that price, it is a definite, definite buy for the coming weeks. If you only have a couple of bucks and you want, want to have a really, really good game to amuse yourself with. Next game will be Forest Village. It will be 40% off these weeks. Let's see what it what it'll cost you. It's actually called Life is Feudal, Forest Village. 40% off and you will pay instead of 22.99 you pay 13 euros and 80 cents uh, a little bit more in dollars I presume as is the usual case so let's start by playing this game see what we like I actually started playing this game because I played banished before which is also a really decent game and which is cheaper but this one has a little bit more yeah, more graphical stance to it. Uh, there is the Toyo, which I didn't play because I already played Banish. I think some of the mechanics, I know how those uh, how those already work. Also, the um, the workshop is pretty active for this game. It's been released, uh, I think, in May for this year, and it's already reduced at a 40 price. There are some bugs, so let's start. Uh, I will load a save game from what I already started. Also, the, yeah, the music is pretty decent. As you can see, the graphics are nice. Construct houses to increase village population. People will settle into houses, create families, and bear children. Okay, so this is the uh, the game I've run it, running it at 10 speed. It is really micromanaging. Um, one problem I encountered pretty early in the game was builders and that is that is one of the back draws of this game in my opinion you have a lot of resources as you can see also the zoom out option is yeah, it's pretty it's a little vague you no know, because you have these yeah 
you cannot zoom out too much. And I don't know if this one is functional. Yeah, it's functional. Okay, they, they have actually patched this game with some error I have encountered in the past, which was that I could not see all my buildings or my builded area in the minimap, which has been fixed at this point. So that's a good thing. I think the, the, they're still working on this game at some point because they did release it. It is a full release at this price, but they're still fixing bugs here and there. Uh, one of the bugs though is when you look at these roads that I'm building here, I have nine population. Food is very short, very fast. So you want to um, you want to build fish or hunting as fast as you can. I have a farm operational right now, but it took an awfully lot of time to build. Why? Well, because I also built a hunter's hut, a forester hut here, and I've built a hunter hut here. And what I did was, I thought, hey, well, let's have a road between them, so they can travel a little bit faster. And that road, every worker I had was working on this road instantly. As you can see, and you can uh, also fine-tune it a bit if I have multiple fields to farm in. I can say, well, I have, let's say I have 20 workers, and 10 are working here, and I don't need that much there, but I want another crop to grow faster. I can take some away here and put them over there. Uh, and here you can select the total. Uh, here you can select the total amount of workers in any occupation. As you can see, there is a lot of occupations you have here. So there's a lot of micromanagement and variety within the game. And one of the best features that I have discovered, uh, which I prefer over banished, is when I've. Let me just. Otherwise, I can't click on these people. Uh -huh. Let's just like this person. Pause the game. Uh -huh. Yep. I can go into the game as one of the people. I can look around and see, oh, this is my village, this is cool. I can now walk and see everything for myself. Um, where the roads are built. Whoa, I mean looking bare. The graphics are pretty decent on it. So when you've built your entire world, your entire um, feudal village, you can actually start an... Uh, okay, let's go. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Press string. Okay, cool. This is actually pretty decent. I can cancel that. Kill animal. Oh. Okay. So how do I pick this up? Take resources. I can actually live in this village and act like one of the villagers. So now I can go to the store and pick that up. So this is a really, really nice thing to do uh, with a game. I've never seen anything like this before. Like, uh, well, you have SimCity and stuff like that. You can do a lot in it, but I've actually never seen a game that has detail on the ground and from above where you can play all of the different um, all of the different occupations. This one is not a hunter, but it can still gather the resources from it. It does walk a little slow. Okay, let's... Oh, okay. With shift I can... Yep. Drop resources. Correct. Right. And we've now just filled our <laughs> See how beautiful this is made. It it really does look beautiful. Graphics are great. Detail is amazing from up close. Um, the roads, yeah, you cannot have everything. With, uh, the roads are a, little, are a little bit messy in this regard. But look, I mean, come on. If I've built an entire village, that's that's one of the features I've missed in Banished. I've built this entire village and. Um, it just, everything was running smoothly, and it's just like, yeah, I have a village now. I, I cannot do anything else. There's nothing I can do. There's no incentive for me to really build it beautifully with the 
streams and bridges and it was more functional than it was than it was well beautiful but with this game you actually have an incentive to put some decorations in to uh, have nice houses maybe even build a castle which is one of the possibilities so usually I do not play a lot of those micromanagement games they get boring really quickly but I think it's really satisfying as a player to start walking in a world that you've created for yourself. You can actually interact, as you can see. We've um, um, this one did not have the actual occupation of hunter, but we could still kill an animal that was near to us. Uh, we could get her some resources. We probably can cut trees or do stuff, and just like live in this world a little bit and get a little bit of the feel of the uh, of the population that's in it. Also, I'm getting the um, getting the feeling that this game is highly, highly moddable, um, judging by how the, uh, the work, workshop has been populating. It is populating gradually and it's populating fast as well. I saw a lot of mods, but yeah, you also have the naked people mod, of course. And well, you also have mods that tweak the food a little bit and do some stuff. Also, you have um, maybe new buildings that you can import into the game, which is a really good feature, especially in this one where you actually um, have to play the micromanagement, but you can also have a feel of the aesthetic, aesthetics of the game. But that's pretty decent. But one of the backdrops of this game though, is I have two workers working right now. And as you can see, they're... My god, they're lazy. Like, it only needs to be built at this point. And stone collected. They're still collecting and... In the beginning of the game, it is really slow paced. That is one of the backdrops that some of the things just... Uh, also, I'm missing the um, prioritizing. Let's say I have a woodshed over there. Uh, no, no, let's just keep it in, um, in the screen. If I have this building and I want this building to be built immediately with all the builders. Because you can see there are no builders building on it. Also, I have two builders active at the moment. There's no builders building in here. So, what are they working on right now? Then I go press this button. They're eating. They're actually not working. And it takes a huge time. I don't know where he's eating, but resources, stone, and put it in. Finding resources. So he's actually not working on it, but I don't see it in here. Like he's not building. Uh, which gives you an impression that the, uh, the builders are lazy in this game. And it takes an awfully long time to uh, to actually start building something up in the beginning, while there is a lot of need in the beginning for for stuff. As you can see, I only have 17 high quality tools left. My first priority would have been food, because it would starve to death. But then winter is coming really fast. I also need a see if that one is already built. Jack. A lumberjack. But that one hasn't been built yet. And it, so I've I've dedicated a lot to food, so that gives doesn't give me any more people to, to do anything else except go for the food. I can well I can lower the food supply because I have a lot of fish. But then I also need to have a blacksmith. And I also need to have a lumberjack or a woodcutter pretty fast after after I've done anything else so there was a lot of need pretty early on which does give you uh, a crisis to overcome at first but that's mostly because of the balancing of the game as you can see I'm building a blacksmith I'm building a wood lumberjack and I have too few people in my settlement so I also have to Build two more houses, and I have so little people to do all of this at once, and it takes an immense long time for me to gather the resources, get the wood, get the hay, get the um, get the stone, get the metal. That's one of the things that, yeah, to start off with, is not that great. But apart from that, it's pleasing to the eye. You also have these cycles. Um, one thing I do miss as well is to see what winter time is or what I can 
or, or a little timer, maybe a bar that tells me when winter is coming to a close, so I can put maybe um, the farmers out of their occupation that they're working on now and start farming instead of doing anything else. And then maybe when winter is coming, I can start harvesting immediately. And when they're done harvesting and winter is coming, I can set them on to hunting instead of farming or on building instead of farming. So, because farming is the only thing that's uh, seasonally uh, dependent. It's dependent on the seasons in the game. So how high would I... Did I rate this game? Hold on. That has disappeared. So how high would I rate this game? Um, now auto-saving. It's hard to say. The, um... The sound is good, you have all these little birds and birds and things going on, you have uh, the sound from obviously what's going on. And since this game is a micromanaging, you can sort of lay back in this game and look at look at the progress that's going on. Um, you can set the timer a little bit lower and grab yourself a cup of coffee. This is one of those games and one of those quiet nights if you're alone for the rest of the time. And you might be a little lonely. With no girlfriend, no family, no friends. You can just get yourself a hot cup of cocoa and um, whatever you eat at Christmas. And just sit and enjoy one of those uh, one of those games at your leisure. This is really a leisure game. Just relax, sit back, and yeah. Just enjoy the view. There's nothing much to say about it. You have. Well, let me show some of the features off. You have these uh, things that are built, notification boards. As you can see, this is the main the profession board you can manage your professions around here this is your inventory which shows you how much of everything you've got also people uh, infants teens buildings number of workplaces enough work for the people that are there um yeah you can do all kinds of stuff this is your general info uh this is your terraforming as apparently you can terraform the terrain as well which is also a really good feature in one of those games um, you have shacks, houses, hostels, all different kinds of storage, different a range of, of foods that you can make. Uh, resource gatherers, you can uh, get quarries, you can uh, kill. I don't, I don't know if anyone is, is so kind of so kind to me at, to tell me what a kiln is. I have no clue what a kiln is. Also, carpenters, you can uh, have a beer brewery, blast furnaces, you can have pavement, and other than Banished, which this game is probably uh, derived on, uh, given every icon and setting and the feel of the game, and I think it's by the same, uh, same publisher. You can also build statues and decorations, playgrounds, bathrooms, small pointers, just to give it an overall uh, feel when you're walking in the, the city you've built. And all kinds of fences, walls, but one of the biggest features that I love in this game is castles. You can build castles, you can build towers, you can get your own feudal... Um, castle in here you can with a farm and, 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 and foresters and like you have your castles with knights and stuff like that and an entire functional land which is amazing in my opinion so for the I see we have a new viewer coming in so let's see what um, we can do we uh -huh. this one is actually fishing let's go in okay interact opening night Interact. Oh yeah, we're now fishing. Yay! Okay, I cannot cancel that move. In any case, let's take someone else. Well, let's take a um, a hunter. One of my hunters. Somehow, all the people are female. As you can see, this is really nice just to walk in. And if I imagine you walking in these castles. Uh, doing a, a couple of chores, just living here. After you've just sat back and enjoyed the view. But we have nothing in our inventory right now. 
I don't know what those are doing, but let's just press six. Oh, we can make music. Can we cut a tree? Okay. Two. Plant a tree. We can plant a tree. Oh. Let's plant a tree somewhere else. Here. Okay, we've just planted a tree. Whoa. That wasn't meant to be. Go that go down that way, I presume. Where's my builder? <laughs> Did you fall off the map? Oh! Yeah, that's one of those <laughs> Holy shit! I've actually discovered a new bug in here. Um uh, Died from hypothermia. Oh, she actually died. She had hypothermia. Oh, see what I mean? This is one of the. Ah, shit. Oh, my entire village is dying. This is what I mean when you got to have a woodcut. You want to have food, you want to have everything so fast in the game, and now my entire population is dying because of hypothermia. And I still don't have my lumberjack finished. That's what I mean, is you're going to have a crisis at some point early on in this game. So, as I'm cutting my reviews a little bit short today... Let me just do one more thing. You sure you want to quit? Oh, it actually closed the entire game now. That wasn't... I started back up again real quick. I just wanted to show you one more thing before I leave uh, Forest Village with my final verdict. Uh, when we start a new game, which is also pretty nice, you can randomize everything. Once you have different IDs, you can set the uh, map size normal to plain hills, mountain sides, or just hills, then climb with mile or just go for harsh. Um, start without houses, it's also a possibility. Village name, we can just. Yeah, whatever, whatever the hell we like. The red dot is where you start off. Let's see if we. Okay, let's start off. Yeah, that seems pretty nice. You can just randomize the maps you're, uh, you're making. Make it a mountain village, make it a pretty flat. Village, but it's always an island because you do need uh, fishing and transfer with transfer nations or trade. So yeah, there there are tons and tons of things you can build with this. It's huge. I mean, look at the detail. This is from close up. This is pretty decent detail, and you can also have a lot of people in your in your game. This is amazing. Also, they're, they all have different faces, different makeups. Like face seed is really good. And there you can see the um, the hillsides and mountainsides for you to explore. There was a little bit of flickering in the screen. I think that's uh, that's one of the, the render glitches or render, render engine. And yeah, just look at it. It's beautiful. So some of the generated maps are a little bit rough on the you. Can't have everything. Like when everything is generated like this automatically, you yeah, I think it's pretty decently done. Uh, when you have flat surfaces, they have like uh, when you see flat surfaces there, you have um, uh, you have grass growing and stuff like that. Or flat surfaces. Also, this is uh, done randomly. On steep surfaces, you have rocks, so there, there are no trees sticking out sideways, you know, as you see with some poorly designed games. So, the design is pretty pretty amazing. This is pretty, a pretty nice game if you want to lay back and just have, um, have a relaxed time building your village and then walking around with it, which is pretty satisfying. So, for the sound effects, the, uh, the music doesn't bother me. It's actually quite soothing through the entire experience, which is what the game is trying to accomplish. <laughs> there are a lot of options. There are uh, tons of different possibilities to build.
build your city to choose from right off the bat. And we can have beehives, we can have all kinds of seeds, all kinds of farm animals, we can go for hunting, fishing, villages only. Um, we can go for entire castles to build, we have decorations, there is a good workshop. Yeah, so the gameplay is pretty good as well. Graphically, the game does have some minor setbacks because of the automatically generated maps and landscape. It does look a little bit rough sometimes with rough cut off edges, so it loses some points on that, but on the general impression of the graphics, they are really, really, really good for this kind of game, and it's pretty uh, decently put together. So I would judge this game. Um, it still has a lot of bugs. There are some features missing, which I find mandatory, like prioritizing buildings. Like I want you to build, put everything on that one first, um, and you cannot do that with roads. If I start building a road, every worker would just abandon his post and go right over to the so that is one of the few. I would give this game a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10, maybe an 8 for this kind of genre. Uh, because it's pretty unique, it has a, a setting that I love, it has the Middle Ages. And a little bit of an adventure side to it. That's, that's really good. 7 out of 10, bordering 8. That's what I would give this game. It's good, but it's not that good. It's, it's above mediocre. Definitely. So I would really recommend buying Forest Village on Steam. At this point, it's uh, 40%. And let's see what we have as well. And let's go for a totally different genre, which I was waiting for a long time. You remember that game uh, from the DOS era where you can uh, build your own roads and then race on them with, uh, with your pals, maybe in multiplayer? This game has been around for quite a long time, but I found it a little bit too um, expensive to try out. Well, there you have it. Trackmania Stadium. It was the first uh, release of a couple of more releases. Uh, this is the first one, which is also the cheapest at this moment. It's 66% off, and you will pay... Let's see, what do you pay for it now? You will pay three euros and forty cents. I mean, that's a that's a fair deal and risk I'm willing to take with one of my games. So you can buy the entire Stadium Three pack, however, with this one and a couple of um, or three others uh, for your pals to to give away. You can also, yeah, you can buy buy a five pack. And you can buy the Trek Mania 2-pack and Complete Pack. The 2-pack is 1340 and the Complete Pack will grant you uh, Trek Mania United Forever Star Edition, Trek Mania Canyon, Trek Mania Stadium, and Trek Mania Valley. I did own Canyon and Valley as well, but I've noticed that this game prides itself in its possibility to race uh, with a hundred players at the same time, well, that'll be quite hard if almost none of the players play um, the two expansions that came on later, like Valley and Canyon. Though the cars are better and looks it looks better, somehow it didn't uh, didn't do it for me because there were so few people playing at the time. In any case, let's just start the review for. Trackmania. Trackmania Stadium coming right up. Also, you'll want to play this one with a controller. Most definitely. Because it is quite a... Uh, it is quite hard to play it on anything else. Uh, with a keyboard, it is counterintuitive. Uh, like, you accelerate with... Um, you accelerate with these with a shift bar, also with Windows, with the Windows US. If you press space too often, you will get this irritating pop up that puts you right out of the game and ruins your score and ruins your race. So, in the solo campaign, actually, no, I'm just going to Europe, world. Hey, okay, race hunts.
red. I don't know what this. Is. Let's go for white. I have one of the tracks. Uh, this is um. I think it is time based. But let's just race this game and see what's uh what's going on. First off, graphics. They still haven't aged too much. They haven't aged too much. That's good. Woohoo! You can really get a grasp of the of the speed in this game. It is pretty high. Uh... Woo! I actually never played this map before, so they'll say, "Yeah, you've already played this game." Fucking hell! No. Ah, shit! I don't want to bounce. Oh, <laughs> right for the finish, I bounced. Okay, I've won a bronze medal. Yay! Let's try it again. Let's go for the next track. So your time is being measured by all the other players that have played it, and I think you can set uh, a world record. Wait, let's go for bronze. You want to watch out for your um, for the for the jumping uh, things. I think you can go off off it for quite fast if you're uh, if you're making a jump and you're going sideways or something like this. You can go off track really fast. Let's start again. Oh yeah, <laughs> we made it, barely. <laughs> we got a silver medal. Cool. So my place is, I'm on place 200 on my hometown. I've actually gained on a couple of people in the Netherlands, in the Europe, and I'm still not the best in the world, unfortunately. Okay, so... Like an opponent? Oh no. Okay, let's uh, let's see what the world records. So this is nice. You have a, a community going on, where you can break world records apparently. So let's see what the world records are. This uh, this lap, the world record is on number one, twenty-two seconds and six. Oh god. Okay, let's see how close we got today. Go. Oh, here you see how he raced it. Oh my god, he doesn't even slow down. This one is a monster. <laughs> uh, close though, a little close. Uh, how much uh, did I get? Uh, two seconds off the world record, so I still didn't beat him. That would have been the fun part if I did the review for this game and I actually beat him. Okay. But I did set a new record. My best time, yeah. What did he do differently? Yeah, he took that shortcut. It's actually nice to see how uh, how that works. Cool. Okay, back to the menu. So we can go for an online play. Okay, these one has. As you can see, there are not too much people. Full speed beginner by Evo. I think people made. Those maps map themselves. I think he actually has made one from Mario World. Let's try that one out. Okay, let's do it. Good. Well. 
Going in. Okay. Connection to the server now. Did not make a connection to the server. Oh, was it then? Well, the problem with this uh, for me, as you can see, is uh, I'm actually racing on time. I'm not racing against these people in a full race. Also, I cannot make contact with them. And with how the people are constructing some of these maps, it's really idiotic what kind of uh oh, what kind of nutcase moves they're making uh, in in their their map construction. As you can see, this is a really hard turn to make. Also, if I wanna ah, uh, you see, a lot of people just screw up there. I would make the maps differently if I uh, if I could. But if this is your game, if you like the competitive edge of uh, of racing, of well, people who made their own maps and go on to world records uh, and make a time lapse and stuff like that, um, this is really a game for you where you can get competitive all over the world. But if that's not your thing, usually it's not my thing as well. Uh, I would steer clear from this, but it is just a nice game to have. I'm gonna leave this game. I'll leave it for now. There is a possibility to race with uh, 100 people at the same time, but yeah, let's. I don't. I don't like it in a way that you have, you can start and spawn. If you want to race with uh, a lot of people. Uh, at the same time on one track and just see who uh, um, who gets there first and in second, third, last where you can bump into each other even on a massive scale like with 100 people I would suggest you play the racing in Grand Theft Auto if that's your, if, if you're looking for a racing game that's really good and has the same stunts and where you can build your own tracks uh, with a little difficulty that's true um, but you can play with a as a race, a one on one on one or with multiple people, then GTA is probably your best option. And you will you also get the different cars and add on add-ons as you go. If you want to go for time lapses, setting world records, be getting really good at certain tracks, building your own, uh, and see how people perform on those. Uh, if you're one of those uh, people who likes to um, get race statistics or just make see if they can. Um, break their own record on certain tracks this game is for you I think and it comes at a really decent price uh, just a little over three euros I mean that's that's not much let's go into the editor and see what that is map editor game now let's go for it holy shit uh, okay Boogie. Campaign. Oh. Are they expecting me to program this? New. I don't know. What? Okay. What's going on here? Uh. Back. Maybe. Okay, I cannot do anything with it. This is no. So yeah, I wanted to show you the other, uh, but the game won't. That's all. Wanna close it down? Yeah. Oh, Track Mania. Uh, as a racing game, it is missing some features. Um, I would really want to see in it, but it's a competitive game. Also, it's nice to see um, the ones who are racing in your game, see what country they're from. Also, you can set uh, records in your province of your country, in your country itself, uh, in the continent you're on, like Europe, and worldwide statistics. So there is a competitive edge to racing in that regard, in timing. When it comes to actually interactive race racing, like in race games, I haven't seen that one yet. So that is that is the biggest down 
downside of this game I've encountered. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's a good game. It looks great. The uh, the sound is good. Uh, the steering on a controller is actually pretty decent with uh, Trackmania, and I would give it for a racing game. Yeah, it's. I think it's a it's it's a sevens day today because I will give it a seven. Um, the reason for that is I miss the um, I miss the possibility to have a live race to start at a start and end at the finish and see whoever comes in first. Uh, it is more time based and that's well something I don't like that much. So it is a matter of tastes. I know uh, the sound is good, the steering is good, the graphics are good, the speed is awesome. Downside is again there are not much people playing here, so it'll be rare for you to enter a server where you have a hundred people racing against each other. And also the maps people make to race in in the editor are insane. Like I've bumped into more things on track where you just need to know to follow a certain crack in some little wall to get to a different part of the track and that's just insane where only the creator or god knows what their purpose was in making those maps that's also one of the downsides of the game so a 7 out of 10 for track mania i also have one of the biggest deals I would want to point out to people and this will be the first time I will ever play such a game because part two was still expensive in my opinion and I just saw part three for 75% off yes I am talking Dark Souls people I am going to be playing my first Dark Souls game ever God help me for doing this I'm not a masochist but I'll try to be for this game. I've been warned. I've been on 9 gag. I've seen the frustration. I've seen the keyboards being smashed to pieces. The controllers being thrown at mother-in-laws. Or girlfriends. Or yeah. So let's go and play Dark Souls. But first I want to say Dark Souls is 3. Is the newest of the series I think. And let's see what it goes for. It goes for <clears throat> at this time you would buy it for 60 euros and now you can get it for 14.99. So if you are a Dark Souls fan and you don't own part 3, this is your opportunity to get it. Also, you could get the deluxe version with Dark Souls and the season pass, you would get 55% off and you would pay uh, 38 bucks 25. I don't like DLCs, so I wouldn't do it. Um, I'm just not fond of DLCs and season passes. I don't want to purchase uh, something that might be uh, created in the future. God, hopefully, it will be worth my time and money. I will not go into that. I will never buy any season pass for any game, even if it's sheerly out of principle. So, oh, Dark Souls 3, God help. Let's go. Need a cigarette for this. Because this is going to be... Um, I have heard that Dark Souls is the hardest game to play ever. I mean, I've had people see... Uh, do have arguments... What is worse, uh, Dark Souls 3 or Cuphead? And I've played Cuphead. So if that was actually a debate, I'm going to get my uh, cross on. On the night of Jesus' birth, I will get my ass handed to me in Dark Souls. Okay. New patch will be. I've already set this, um, set the game up to lose the intro. Uh, apparently, some huge giant has awoken 
And I'm not into the lore of the game just yet. Um, matter of fact is I have no idea what the controls are. Hmm. Right trigger, strong attack. That's my strong attack. Okay, that's pretty easy. The block, shield block. Sorry. Okay, how do I do? Okay, let's just see what happens. Okay, he died easily. I thought this, this game was supposed to be hard. Okay, the controls feel a little bit clunky, uh, or at least how he's um, how he's moving around. Okay, B, backstab, F and B, roll, roll this way. This way. We'll just do a backstab. Um, let's see if I can do anything with the controls. I want the um, cinematic effect. I want a camera tracker. Okay, that option is not in. Cinematic effects. Hmm. This actually makes the game uh, harder for me because I can. Move. So move and be is dash, but I'm still making a roll. Okay. What's remaining? There is no mini map for me to go on. Which is, is a shame because I have no clue what. Move plus B is dash. I'm not dashing. B was rolling. Oh, I have to hold B. If I hold B, I dash. Short sure, well. Cool. Okay, so what does this one say? Guard, left mouse button is guard. Find an enemy. Right button. Critical hit. Okay, cool. So we can sneak up on the fellas. Yeah, and I was all... Oh, this game shouldn't be too hard. Ah. Have to... Oh, shit. Get... Ah. Oh. Yeah, I am getting the idea I will be seeing that thing a lot. Okay, so I that's that's the point where I have one camera to on the movement because when I block like this, I would wanna go backwards. If I could, oh yeah, I can do that. Dash back. Right. Control camera with right. Regular attack is the right button. I thought that was a power attack. Strong attack, right trigger. This is a strong attack. Target lock. Okay, I missed that one. If I lock it, let's see what happens when I walk back. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's actually what I wanted to do back there for the other ones. Okay, cool. So I've done that. Okay, now I actually know how some of this uh, some of this game works. Okay, I already picked that up, so I don't have to do that twice. Thank God. Run. You'll be dead. And then we go from behind. 
Ah, là, t'as moins. What? Can we dodge that? Okay, cool. Use item. X. We're still in the tutorial phase. Can we use an item? Go up here. The graphics are... They look pretty decent. I'm not kicking anything. I'll attack. Lost. After. Okay. But this way we can parry. Parry and repost. Okay. But I do think I need to get a handle of these controls. Toggle weapon, toggle items. I don't know what the items do just yet, but we found out find out a little bit. Uh, but I was saying the graphics look good, but they do not overwhelm me. Bonfire is lit. Bonfire? There's one of the horses. Okay, select him. Let's see if we can parry. And repost. Actually, it wasn't a repost, that was just a. Wow. Dashing, jump. But first, I have to. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh shit, let me block, let me block you! Ah, fuck! What? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh. We weren't screwing around when I told me this game is fucking. Yeah. So, there is no music in it. Um, yeah, the game is hard. I knew that. I knew this. Gosh, oh, we started at the bonfire again. Let's see if my repost is anything better this time. Oh, yeah. My repost still sucks. Let's repost. Let's see. It has to be timed perfectly. That was a repost. Polish corpse. Eat its soul. Souls retrieved. And we can jump. While falling, plunge attack. So when we fall. This. And I parried it. Die. Okay. Let's get ready for my ass to be kicked decently. Hello. Move the sword. Then I'm gonna fight this. Wow. Uh, dude, taking your sword. Holy shit! No. 
Yeah. But that was ever gonna happen. For a game that is this, um, I do think the controls are a little clumsy. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, they're a little counterintuitive on the controller. But I think it's a little bit getting used to. Key bells. There is a ton of stuff that I can. Is that, but controls are not not that intuitive to me just yet. Ah shit! Like when I'm. Uh, this is the thing that I that, that I mean is counterintuitive, because when I want to hit something, I usually in every other game, I press X. Automatically, this is intuition I've had from decennia of gaming. But here they switch it to the triggers. Usually, the triggers only indicate one special move, or with race games, it's used uh, excessively. But not in games of this uh, of this genre. So I'm having trouble with, uh, with that on that on. The I cannot go in there. Okay. There was no evading this. See if I can evade evade this. Oh, and he gets me. It's like he can't miss. I died. <laughs> yeah. Well, the atmosphere is is good. The graphics are pretty decent, though. I find this for a AAA title a little bit underdone. If you look at the uh, at, at at the blocks, it looks like it looks drawn a bit. Um, it doesn't look as as eerie. As I would expect it from a um, from a game within a within a scary genre, though this might have to do with the fact that my lighting might be um, might be too light. But yeah, the the games uh, the the controls are a little bit clumsy when you're not used to them. I don't know why I'm following this guy. First of all, let's give this boss one more shot and see if we can actually beat him this time. How am I supposed to get anywhere near him? I have no possibility of ever dodging that. He has such a huge reach. It's insane. How am I ever gonna... How am I ever going to get near him or away from him when he's doing these hits? Seems like an impossible task. I mean, that's why this game has the famous 9-gag meme of he died in it because it's nearly impossible to complete. Okay, so well, that's it, I guess, for for Dark Souls. Um, after these reviews, I will do for you every week. Usually, I would post them to YouTube. So if you're watching, oh shit, I'm getting an ass. Ah, one of the. I hate it when you do that. Okay, one of the back draws. As long as I, as when I do this. I'm expecting the game to pause. See, when the game doesn't do that, nah. It has to pause for me. So 
like if I want to set my graphics I do not want to, something to grab me from behind while I'm in my settings when I'm trying to get my resolution right or lighting right and then have to die and maybe get out of this menu. anyway um, I would give this game sound is good but I am missing some background music as slightly as though it may be it does give me a sense of atmosphere um, games have the artwork which is great the artwork is well done in this game though I would was expecting a little bit more macabre um, the artwork is good but I'm missing that subtle music that that gives me the mood of the uh, of the environment and of the um, task at hand so to speak uh, also I'm missing some of the lore uh, if this this is part three and I've never played one of the Dark Souls game um, I'm missing a lot of the lore why I'm here and this night what the hell am I doing here uh, why would I care but if you're uh, I think I should play part one and two first and then go into part three but since I'm jumping into part three I do feel like I'm uh, a miss at some point um, like I said the music is absent um, sound effects are decent though they do not stun me or as strikingly better than anything other in the market um, the style is good though some of the graphics are a little bit uh, you know like when you see these um, these brushes in their alpha channel models which in this day and age I find lazy to the least um, if I make a game I will use them but I'm not a triple-a publisher which has two successful games already in his pocket um, but yeah the, the, the movement is good models uh, per uh, models are good the ragdoll goes to an extent where it's it's absurd if I walk into a corpse, it puts it, it puts its limbs all over the all over the place, um, like rigor mortis never exists in this game. The bosses, as you see with the first boss, is extremely hard, and there is no clue, or I could not find any way. I'm pretty experienced in games, and I could not find anything that would help me um, defeat him. I think most of it attributed to luck. Or being extremely careful in approach. So yeah, and the controls on a controller to me seem pretty counter counterintuitive because the hit button, usually the layout of a of a game, is the X is mostly the normal hit. And you have a pretty decent hit with either Y or the right trigger. And this one uh, is for menus and special powers most of the time and this one is well for anything else like superpowers or cycling through weapons these two uh, that's mostly the case but what I have to do now is I I'm walking around with this I can block with this and I have the right or the button with the right button I can do a normal attack which is pretty slow of itself and then I can do an even slower power attack with the right trigger and I can parry with the left trigger so the, and these ones are for this one lets me drink a potion and I do not know what these this one uh, B lets me uh, dash or run which is also a little counterintuitive usually when you run uh, the run button in most games uh, in this genre, you will press, you will press and hold the L button, and then move. And when you want to do a normal walk, you get your thumb off, thumb off the left, uh, the left stick, and yeah, they would make a normal one, a normal run. Also, I find it extremely annoying that I can move around while I have my main menu open. Why did you do this? Oh god. I never expected to do this, but... Overall design is good, the game is immensely popular, and yet... 
I'm going to give Dark Souls 3, sorry fanboys, a mediocre um, a mediocre rating. I would give it a 5 out of 10, or bordering 6 maybe, uh, if I get a little bit further in. Because, yeah, the controls are kind of intuitive. The most of the uh, hard stuff in the game is because the, because the controls feel clumsy and counterintuitive to me. Like any other game in the genre, they could have had some... Um, they could have put the buttons where they belong, at, at the over layout. But they wanted to make it difficult, and they put the controls in there to be difficult. So yeah, there's no auto lock, there's no auto camera follow. Um, if I wanted to, uh, there's no music in the background. I just have the wind blowing. Some of the um, well, some of the modeling is good, but they're not really AAA quality as I would expect, uh, as seen on the um, on the foliage. Um, yeah, some of the it looks clumsy at some times where I can definitely well. Um, my PC can run this, but if you are going to make a low poly uh, trunk in here, it, it is rough. It is. This is not AAA title worthy. It's so damn rough to look at the scenery. Uh, I can see the um, I can see the meshes all over, um, except maybe for the tombstones. They put some, they put some detail in that, but why the hell would you make a tree trunk that way? They are not square. Also, the texture is sometimes placed at odd places. Just like slap it on there and it'll fit. Um, if you're gonna use one of your assets more than one time, at least make them look detailed and decent. I mean, those things can be brushed off with a little bit of smoothing and a little bit of bump mapping to give it a little bit more detail. It shouldn't have been so crude. But the character models are done rather nicely. So yeah. But yeah, mediocre. Bad. I will play this game a little bit further. Um, like I wanted to say. Let's just exit this game. Also to go into the exit. Chore. Exit. Okay, now I go exit the game, then I have to go into the retirement. Yeah, that was one of the other things as well. And then I have to go and quit. So, this was my review. We've seen uh, some nice games. We've seen some... Um, well, the games? No, actually, I might have a surprise for you just yet. And it's an indie title. And it was popular. But dear God, okay, it's almost midnight, it's almost Christmas, and I'm going to do the unholy of unholy. I'm going to play Who's Your Daddy. <laughs> and this is one of the games that my daughters actually wanted to see and actually wanted to buy. I've bought this game twice, and I didn't know there were dildos in it. So... If the mother's watching, I'm sorry. They wanted to play it. Who's your daddy? So let's see what Who's Your Daddy has in store for us. The store. It is on sale at this moment. It is an older game. Or is it? Yeah, it is an older game from December 2015. Uh, recently, according to 10-year-old, it had a little bit of hype on YouTube. And Dutch uh, grad schools, I think. Well, basic schools, we call them. And it used to be... You could get this game for 5 bucks, but now it was 250 So, yeah, well... It is an indie title. It is badly made. It looks horrible but is it fun and according to my kids it's so much fun um because it is a such a forbidden kind of title and such an awkward gameplay 
Um, it is kind of creative that they've actually done this. So, okay, I'm going to play for you. Who's your daddy? Tortilla, Evil Tortilla games. They also made a couple of uh, of other novelty games. This one I oh, was a program and it already crashed. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't say it was a tech advanced, but here we go. Tortilla, please load. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Character customization. As you see, it is pretty low polygon. Music is nice though. The bars on the on the railing make no sense whatsoever. There are some basic animations. They didn't think it through that Chrome on one of the sync. Um, uh, I don't know what you call them. Yeah, would help. I mean, transparent clock, low polygon bananas on the wall. This game makes no sense at all. And it's not meant to make any sense. But that, that's the beauty of it. And that's why it's for game. As you can see, you have Strange Rubber Hat, which is a clipping, horribly matched dildo, dildos on the head of the players. Yeah. I mean, if the designers decided they would have dildos on people's heads, you're in for a good time. Okay, let's go for a challenge. Uh, play online. Options? Do you have any... Uh... <laughs> the graphics are that bad it even it probably didn't even bother. Okay, let's just step the field. I mean, I don't know. Use low quality shaders now. Limit view distance. High quality. Go for high quality. With my graphics card, this is only getting 80 frames per second. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, back. Uh, gameplay, yeah, let's just, let's just start this. I want to play as baby. Play as a baby in the original game mode of Who's Your Daddy. You have four minutes to avoid your father's love and find a way to certain doom. Uh, the basic thing of the game is you have to... You as a baby have to kill yourself. And the father has to prevent it, so I have to find ways to kill myself. Okay, looking for daddy. Hmm. Already starting. Okay. This, this is so bad. Mommy will be home for the help. Okay. I don't know. Okay, I should. Oh, can I do with this? Anything? Yeah. Grab a pill. How do I open it? I cannot open it. Open the door. <laughs> it looks horrible though. It really looks horrible. Okay, what are the controls? There's this blur going on. I haven't really thought it through. New baby screams? No. I wouldn't want to do that. Key bindings? Okay, what do you have? Crouch, jump, prone, interact, grab. Use left hand, use right hand. You pick me up? No, you don't. No, don't pick me up. Get away from me. Ah! What am I supposed to press here? Oh, it puts me back in my... Back in my crib. Am I making fuck you the sounds? <laughs> this looks horrible. He has me upside down. Yeah, screw you, daddy. I'm going... I'm going away. Eh. Nope, I'm in the closet. What? <laughs> I escaped! Yay! What can I do here? Is there anything I can do? <laughs> the whole house is coming apart. No, you don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> this looks... So... Oh, this looks so bad! 
Okay, can I go in there? Eat trash. I've eaten trash. Eat the trash. I'm going in the stove. I cannot jump. Yay, go in, go in, go in. No, 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 Okay, this game is bad. <laughs> what is this? What can I do here? I think he doesn't know I'm in here. Okay, go, go, go. Oh, I do not have a key for the ignition. Ah, daddy, no. <laughs> Baby wins, I've died. Yay! I have died! <laughs> I don't know. I have no clue why I won. But apparently my baby is this, uh... Is this really bad green palamush. Yeah, it is. It is a bad game. Also, the music is is laughable. The graphics are laughable. Oh uh, yeah. Challenges, baby challenge, daddy challenge. This is what I call novelty gaming at its best. It's it's bad. It looks bad. It feels bad. The controls bad. The graphics are bad. But the idea is pretty original, and it's it's daring to have a game where you uh, play a baby who wants to kill himself and a daddy who needs to prevent it. So it's it's pretty evil and it's good in the same way because you're saving the baby while the baby is trying to do everything that is power to commit suicide. Kind of like real life is sometimes. How would I rate this game? Um, five bucks is pushing it, really. Um, two and a half bucks, yeah. I bought it two times for my daughters for it. I can see why little kids love it because the concept of the game. Um, so, modeling wise, I do not think they've made, uh, they've used the asset store at all. Because most of the models are pretty, they seem like handcrafted. At least, and there is some effort put into it. I don't know how many people are working in the studio, but I don't think there are maybe a two friends or something like that. Um, yeah, the, like I said, the graphics are bad, the controls are bad, the, yeah, the buttons are bad. Like, they just use this computer a font, it looks horrible. Music is good. Uh, I would give this game a 4 out of 10 as a standalone game game but since it's an indie title and it comes really cheap and it's a novelty by a small studio uh, given that as its uh, multiplier score I would say a 6 would I play this game ever again Probably not. Will my kids play this game anytime again? They definitely will. They've already had three hours in this game. And they've had loads of fun. Also, especially when they went up to the bad room, uh, bedroom and there were dildos flying all over the place. So, I didn't expect that to happen, but when I heard them laugh for about an hour ago, that's when I <laughs> went onto their computer and said, and was going like, what the hell is happening there? They have dildos! And they were playing this mom and daddy game. Yeah, dildos are for mommy! Stuff like that. So they had a lot of fun with it. Um, this is not for the hardcore gamer, as I said. Like, my two daughters love this game. 
they will probably give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, they will probably also get bored with it pretty easily because it's just this one level. So is it worth the price? I think, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. 250 is a nice price for it. Do enjoy it for a little bit of 5 minutes. I can drink, I can buy a beer for 250 or I can play this game for about as much time as it takes me to finish a beer. So, and I feel drunk and unfulfilled either way. So, this was my Sunday night review. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, give me a follow or a like on the videos. If you're watching this on Twitch, you can give me a follow if you like the content. Um, I did not stop and start the games in between the reviews. That's because I am going to edit the videos and make a little better reviews on YouTube instead of just pasting these up to you. Uh, I want to start with the winter sales and do the another one next week and then put them on YouTube a week later after that with a little bit more detail, a little bit more speech where we talk about I've played and put those on YouTube. So it's going to be a little bit more sophisticated than just live review gameplay. Anyway, so this is my Sunday review. I've reviewed five titles in two hours and... Yeah, that seems pretty much it uh, for now. There are also different games I have in for next week. Um, I'm also planning Outlast 1, Alec, and maybe some other games I will buy during after the update. So, stay tuned, and I will see you during um, Wednesday. So, you have yourself a pretty good Christmas. And don't eat too much and don't drink too much. Ah, well, fuck it. Eat and drink yourself to death. <laughs> Your body, just remember to celebrate this with. Okay. Bye, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the show. So